Here we have some hellebore. And this is the species type, I believe. And I have had this one for several years. And it is a nice size. It is a pretty nice sized hellebore and it is April and we have a few that are still showing a little bit of color, but a lot of them are starting to form seed heads or seed pods, I guess. And for cut flowers, this is the stage that you want to pick them in because they tend to last a little bit longer once they start to form these seed heads. As you can see here, there's nothing formed yet. So that is the stage where they will last longer. Here's another good example. And just in case you're wondering, these are babies. These are from last year. And I was so upset because, like the first year, I had little tiny seedlings of hellebores. I didn't know what they looked like, and I had weeded them. <laughs> and I was so upset because as I was weeding them, I thought, what if these are hellebore seedlings because they were near them? And sure enough, they were. I looked it up, and they are very tiny. A good way to know if it's a hellebore seedling or not is because, don't mind my hands, I've been weeding, but um, they have toothed little leaves. Let's try to get a little bit closer. But they have three leaves and they are toothed. And they will also, when they're a little bit younger, they will have the smooth leaf and then the next ones are toothed. Well, if that makes sense. <laughs> but those are hellebore seedlings. And now I will try and find some one-year-olds. Okay, this I think is probably more like two years old. It's not bloomed. I would say that this has probably, this is its second year. And I would say this is this one's third year. So there's the difference. And let's see if I have any more. Now this is a good example here. This is the first hellebore seedling that I have had bloom. Now it's about done for the year. There's this one right here. And this one is probably four or five years old. This was its first year it bloomed and it's pretty much done for the year. Here's a, that one's gonna be blooming soon. This is my first hellebore seedling to bloom. And I've got some tulips here and a lot of irises. Here is another hellebore. These are done for the year as well. Now I have not noticed them reseeding themselves, but they are in a little bit of a different environment. Here there is a lot of ivy and a lot of leaves collect here over the winter. But these are pretty much done for the year as well. Here is some of my favorite hellebores I have. I believe these are called Ivory Princess. And I have a grouping of three here. And let's get a little bit closer. So here we have them in some different stages. Here is a newer one. Here's one that is starting to form seed heads. These are older. But this is probably my favorite. I think they're so pretty. 
They're just a nice light pink. And I like the leaves as well. They have a pretty variegated leaf. And they're just really pretty. And they do very well and produce so many flowers every year. And I, just a little side note, these I did not get all the leaves. See this one? This is an older one. See how the leaves are dry and just weathered. So you would want to cut that right here. Let's see if I can snap it. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> I'll have to get my clippers. But these are all the older leaves and ideally these are leathery and tough and usually you want to get these cut right before they start to emerge in the spring. So these are all old leaves and you can tell, old, new. So these are good to cut because it's a little bit more difficult now and I just didn't get to it because now you have all these pretty blooms and now you'll have to go through and just cut, cut, cut. <laughs> Maybe I'll show me cutting them later. But here is my lovely group of three. And I also have some Solomon seal right here. And these are just starting to pop up. There's a, there's a little one as well. Here is another variety of hellebore, and these are very pretty also. They have a deeper purple flower, and these are also pretty much done for the year. They are not forming seed heads just yet. It's almost like this variety has taken a bit of a break, because last year it bloomed like crazy, and this year not so much and I think it just may be taking a little bit of a break to read up on these guys I don't know if that's something they do but it was twice the size of this last year but here's another variety and I can't remember the name on this one but it's very pretty as well now for hellebores I like to space them about 18 to 24 inches apart and they like dappled shade they can handle some sun i wouldn't probably put them in full sun i think they'll just do better overall with some dappled shade they do good at the base of shrubs or under deciduous trees but they're actually pretty easy to take care of and i thought i would show you what I was talking about earlier, about getting rid of some of these old leathery leaves. And you can tell what they look like. They're just tattered, they're weathered, they're tough, and they're easy, easier to take care of before they flower because now I have to kind of root around and find where the ends of the stems are. And they usually just form around the bottom of the plant. So here I've got all of the old ones off. And as you can see here, this is a nice new leaf. So you get the ones in the back here. just help keep the plants looking nice and tidy and sometimes I can see one over there sometimes the old tattered ones will come up through the middle of the plant just because of the way it grows like here's one right here it's out of here but sometimes the old ones will even form in the center 
but for the most part they are around the perimeter the outside of the plant and they're pretty noticeable i mean honestly they're very easy to take care of and a little tip is um, usually nurseries or big box stores will have these for sale in the spring early spring when they're blooming but in containers and when they're small plants they do not look that impressive after they bloom and the first ones I showed you they actually were ones that I got on clearance because they just didn't look that great but I knew what they were because a lot of hellebores can cost you 10 20 30 dollars and sometimes if it's a rare one it's even more but they look a little tattered and not very impressive after they flower so a lot of times nurseries and big box stores will clearance them and i remember the ones that i first showed you the great big one with all the little seedlings around it i think i got it for like two dollars and the ones that was in the leaf litter and the ivy i think they were like a dollar 75 each and i got all they had it was just a couple but probably right about now you might be able to find them so keep an eye out for those at the store but overall they're very easy to take care of if you have a little bit of shade and just give them plenty of room because they do get nice sized because this is one right here and I probably could have given them a little bit more room because they're just starting to touch but I did a little trio and that's another tip that I learned because I used to work at a greenhouse and they sold perennials as well and it's always good to either plant one of something three five always do um, groups of like three or five because you don't want things to look even it can kind of look unnatural so that was something they always told me was to try to sell them or if you're buying purchase them in groups of three to five and that keeps the landscape just looking a little nicer well i think that is it for today i'm trying to think if there's anything else to say about hellebores but overall very easy to take care of and once they get established they are absolutely gorgeous and if you're lucky they will even take some seedlings for you and you will want to get the um, orientalis those are the ones that will produce seeds the easiest probably not the hybrids at least they won't come true all right well you guys have a good weekend and a happy easter and i will see you in the next video